Hello, my name is Gowrie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Please show support by subscribing. Thank you. In this video, we visit one of a kind bee farm situated at the South Caribbean town of Cocles, Costa Rica. Hola, mi nombre es Carlos de Costa Rica, Caribbean South Coast. I'm the founder of Api Agricultura. Thank you to this lady to come and visit our project. Our project is to educate, to rescue, and to show the human how beautiful and special is this type of insects. Um, welcome to my bee farm. Pura vida. <laughs> yes, so. Pura vida. Are you right mm -hmm. here? Yes. This is honey, raw honey, mm -hmm. with propolis. Mm. This thing right here, we do it here on the project, is 100% naturally, mm -hmm. with raw honey. Mm -hmm. This is the propolis. This is resin from all the trees where the bee goes into an ecosystem and then bite the tree, the tree bleed, and then they bring the propolis to the colony. It's antifungal, antibacteriano, antimicrobiano. You can heal your cuts when you have uh, infections and you throw this is very good when you have terrible flu this is very good people use this in the covid things and it was really good and like i use it a lot and really support me when i have how do you use that simply you just get one one spoon mm -hmm. every it's a medicine thing mm -hmm. since you don't it's not like a every day mm -hmm. but when you get like you know, sick with those flu, with those infections, bad cuts and things like that. You get one little spoon and it really help a lot. We have people from all over to come and do their university thesis, you know, mm -hmm. investigate about bees and things like that, and children's school and the community. We've been doing this for nine years. Nine years? Nine years. So, uh, Carlos, what got you started in this beekeeping? Uh? Well, my, my, my Tatara grandpa, he was a beekeeping, but after many generations passed, I ended and have that feeling like him. Uh -huh. And because since a little kid, I love it. I love this special insect. Because that is, when I, when I get older and older, I had that desire to begin. And this is when I begin in the year 2014. 2014? Oh, very interesting. I learned a lot. Oh, yeah? yeah. Uh, so, uh, where did your, uh, you know, uh, ancestors practice? Which part of the country? In the Pacific side. In the Pacific side? In the Pacific side because it's the, the place in Costa Rica where you can do a, um, a beekeeping, honey production. Oh. That's where everything is. But here in the Caribbean, nobody do that. And this is in, in the Caribbean, I'm the only project uh, do this type of... Uh, really? Is, yeah, it's is the, oh. first, um, the first uh, museum of life being in this part of Costa Rica. And so, since you have had the opportunity, which is fantastic, that see. what an opening you had, <laughs> but it's also kind of sad that there was nobody else doing it before. Yeah, that was the reason my wife and, and my daughter Liberty, we begin doing this because uh, my community don't see the bee like a form of life. They see the bee like a dangerous thing. Oh! Because it's when you see my culture, anything they are afraid, then kill it. Yes. This is through happy agriculture and to protecting and educate. We want to teach in the community, hey, listen, it's a way how you can manage the bee. The bee is not that what you think. And there's so many species and they're so important in, in the ecosystem. And this is what we've been doing for so many years and with people like volunteers from all over the world come right. and support us. Yeah. The project was closed for almost two years because of the pandemic. Oh, I see. But after, you know, everything became more stable, you know, we began working a little bit. Right. Yeah, and we, we're still in the world. And that's, I'm so glad you're still surviving. Yeah. And uh, Carlos, since you have established here since 2014, has there been any other interest from other parties to expand on this and uh, make it a lot more viable for the world to uh, come and learn and, you know? Yeah, yeah. After, you know, we, we inspire a lot of people in, in Costa Rica. And now, after nine years, we hear around Costa Rica, uh, people want to do a decent thing. And I have many friends begin doing this decent thing. Maybe not like the way we do, because this is a... Let's go say a prototype project, yes. you know, this is a, a, a pioneer project. Yes, yes. This is, this is very extensive. Yes. But I know a lot of friends, they're, they're, they're taking care of bees, you know, and, and they're educate, and then they get involved in this 
beautiful world, you know, what, what is the bee. And, and I know we motivate a lot of institutions to, to, um, to do it because uh, agriculture work uh, with many institutions, you know, double standard food company. Yes. We teach them for five years how to protect them and rescue the bee and the bananas farm. I see. And then we're working with the fire department for two years. Mm -hmm. Because then take care of a lot of emergency of bee around the Caribbean. Right. And says, that's why we would do it this morning. We was working with them. I see. We rescue the bee, uh, like together. Oh, yeah? And so says, is, I think before before the year 2014, nobody do it that, they mm. feel it. Mm. Now, it's more people oh. in the community protecting the bee. Uh, that, that is very reassuring because like, you know, coming from Canada, mm -hmm. I've always learned that, um, I mean, everybody should know that yeah. honeybees are critical to our environment yeah. for obvious reasons. And uh, there's been a lot of invasion of African killer bees yeah. The, you know, right from Texas above, they've been killing them and uh, there's a huge imbalance that's yeah. starting to happen yeah. and people are starting to notice and that's why I think there's more focus of the world yeah. on preservation of yeah. this kind of thing. Uh, uh, you you very, very uh, true what you say here. That is the reason people kill the, the Apis mellifera killer bee because they're so afraid of this type of bee. But let me tell you something, in nine years, in working with this specific uh, uh, Apis mellifera, uh, we call killer bee or African bee. Man, I don't find that completely 100% um, killer bee. I find it a hybrid is mixed with the European bee and the wild bee, like the one you say African bee, and then boom, it's a new generation where they're so gentle they're so fragile and they're not dangerous like what people, you know, think. This is true, educate people through happy agriculture. We're teaching, hey, listen, it's not what you think. Look, they're so easy to manage. You just have to learn how to take care of them. And this is how we've been doing for so many years. If they want to come and volunteer, uh, like I saw some people from Spain and Switzerland, how can they apply here to come and volunteer? Oh, they, they, I mean, they can write us on Instagram. Yes. We have Happy Agricultura Costa Rica. Okay. That is, there is the email. There is all the information they need. They just need to write us. And, and then we answer them, right? And then if they're interested, you know, um, with, the, with the project, we uh, find the space to then come and stay with the family. We're, we are a family project. We're not an ONG or a foundation. We're just a family who want to send a beautiful message to the world about how special is this type of insects and why we need to work together to protect them because without them, it's no life. Just, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's why um, it's so much more interesting See. and heartwarming because yeah. it is a family project. A family. It is not a big industry. No. 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 That's why the heart is right in it exactly there's a lot of love and passion in this mm -hmm. exactly. how many volunteers currently do you have carlos well we we try to work in maximum three a month mm -hmm. and that is a perfect amount of volunteers to to because if we do it too much it's, it's it's more difficult to them to learn and because we like family we want to connect with them we want to spend a lot of time with them and we want to teach them you know and make them part of our life this is this is the reason with three volunteers among this is perfect for the family for the project and for the bee. that this sounds is, good we we prefer three uh, so any special kind of education or background they should have before they come and apply for volunteers? Yes, one of the very important, good question, baby. Thank uh, you. One, uh, one of the, just to say, um, rules uh, will be they're not allergic mm. to the bee. Of yes. course. <laughs> that would be something else. Yeah, we expose a lot of, you know. The, yeah, oh yeah. And the second option, they don't have like bad criminals you know oh yes they need to be a good yeah. behaviors and another thing uh, in the property is not allowed to drink not allowed to smoke mm. uh, because it's, we have children yes uh, you are with a family yes and, and it's very poor uh, that type of things right the volunteer now 
but they had the option to they want to go to the village they want to drink a beer they want to you know have party fun. yeah it's, it's welcome outside yeah outside but yeah. in the property it's, yeah it's a very disciplinary right it's more to educate work and right be like a and you need to have that because yes. of the extreme importance of what you're doing yeah. you have to have a very disciplined code of conduct yes and you especially have to here you see mamas papas and children's uh, school institutions uh, come all the time because we, we need that structure uh, very strict so about the bee itself uh, just in two or three sentences uh, in a day what time they actually start to be more active and what happens throughout the day and when do they start to become inactive this is a really nice question and i spend a lot of time in look the bee and when i say look at look the bee as i wake up like four in the morning four thirty in the morning just when you see that dark mix with the day and even before that already a special group of bee are outside in the colony and why this is the one uh, this is the group of the colony go outside in the ecosystem to see where the pollen and where the honey is and then this group of the bee come inside of the colony and and send the message to a special other group and this is the one like five in the morning before that they're already into the into the rainforest but this is just a short time of the morning because very early to 12 one o'clock in the morning it, the activity has stopped and this i find now that because you could see all the beehives of the bee uh, uh, go around the colony and and go around the beehive and you see so much amounts of bee in the outside entry and then in the morning you don't see no one just after midday you see a lot of bees come back to the to their family to their to the house right right and this is this is like from the morning to half of the day you you see a lot of activities and then and then, then from from that time to the afternoon they're just chill yeah. just chilling we see that yeah. yeah siesta time people want to uh, because they don't have the time or the uh, you know um the resource to come and uh, volunteer physically mm -hmm. how can they help you economically well i mean they, they could do a lot of stuff they can sponsor let's go say the rescue then let's go say every every month then donate whatever they want we have the information the bank accounts information and every time we will go rescue and we bring this colony this colony will have her name and and like that we send videos and we share videos and uh, we appreciate to the videos uh, what these people are doing in Costa Rica for for being rescued because so this is another way they can fit if they're not physical in the project but they know they are supporting a project to this project to go rescue and protect them exactly because I mean volunteering is great that's one 50% of it and then there's a whole larger aspect of the economy yes. the, um, especially with pandemia, uh -huh, pandemia you must have suffered economically because yeah. of the lack of like you said sponsorship yeah we we, we lose the sponsor uh, after when the covid came mm -hmm. because everything was shut down and it was very hard for us to sustain everything because even with a covid but always people call us for for bee rescue mm. you need to maintain all these bees right and we could never stop because if we continue, continue, it was a really hard time to survival. We closed the project. When I say we closed the project, that means we stopped rescuing the, we start going through presentations and it was really sad for us because we knew people was killed them and there's no chance to we go. Yeah. But uh, beginning now and we little by little opening and volunteers start to show up again, you know. A lot of people want to come to Costa Rica to, to have a experience with a slug, with a monkey, with all these animals, right? But it's very different when, when people say, okay, I'm going to go to Costa Rica to protect bee or to rescue bee. Like people don't accept those projects too much or, or like, the, the, oh, I'm afraid, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I'm allergic, maybe I'm going to die, maybe this and that. Because it's a bit different between a, a rescue project for bee 
and a rescue center for animals. Yes. These ones are very popular. So people want yes. to go there. Yes. But this is something we learned through the year, but uh, we never give up. We continue and continue and continue. And mm. I know every person comes to our projects because they love the bee and yeah. that's unique. <laughs> yes. That's yes, unique. yes, that's yeah. very unique. Yeah, that's so why we love it. To more people come and, and support the project and learn about these yeah. beautiful things what we do here in, in the South or Caribbean coast. You're welcome and thank you so much. And if you have more questions, for sure, I'm here. Thank you so much, Carlos. Pura vida. Pura vida. Take care. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.